Today's project, we're going to use a vintage plate. I got this at a thrift store and then we're going to put it in a Ziploc bag and put a cloth or a towel over top of it. And we're going to hit it gently with a hammer. And you want something that has a floral pattern or something that you really like and then check it and see how it's broken. And those look like great pieces for charms or pendants for a necklace. And then you gently tap a couple more and then you get the sizes that you want and then decide which one would be the best pendant and I'm going to show you two different versions. You're going to grab some sandpaper or this is like a sanding pad which I love and sand the edges so that they're smooth and that there's no place that can cut you. Then we're going to take some copper tape which I love. This is the coolest stuff and we're going to put that along the edge. It has a sticky back so you're going to peel that just a little at a time and we're going to put that right along the edge of your china piece and put that all the way around and you're gonna see how I have it kind of lifted up so it's like about a quarter inch or an eighth of an inch higher because we're gonna fold that down afterwards to make it more decorative. As soon as you get your copper tape covering the entire piece of china on the edge you're gonna overlap the last part to go onto the other side and then trim it and then you're gonna gently push down all the copper tape that's sticking up on both sides and you're going to continue doing that all the way around until you get the top and the bottom completely pushed down. We're going to work on our second charm and then come back to this one. We're going to grab a piece of leather and we're going to put a bead of our E6000 and then we're going to grab a large jump ring and we're going to use that as the top of your charm and put it on the leather just hanging about halfway and then add a little more E6000 glue and then put the charm right on top and then we're gonna let that dry and after the glue is totally dry you're gonna grab some scissors and trim the edge all the way around and now on this one we're gonna just grab some gold paint and we're gonna put that on the edge to make that sealed and to look more finished and then we're gonna let that dry. And we're gonna do the same process of adding a jump ring on this pendant so that it can hang off of a chain, but we're gonna do it in reverse. We're gonna add some E6000 glue to the top of the pendant, put the large jump ring halfway down at the top, and then cover the back with some more glue and put the leather. But I won't show you that part since I already kind of showed you on the first charm. Now for our first charm necklace, I'm gonna show you how to make an adjustable sliding knot necklace out of leather cording. You'll need three feet of a leather cording. You could use cotton cording also. And put one piece over top the other, and you're gonna wrap it around two to three times. So it makes like a coil. And then you're gonna take that little tail that you see on the right, and you're gonna put it over top and slide it right through all those coils. And then you're gonna pull it really snug like you're trying to tie a knot, but it's actually gonna slide. So after you tighten it, see how it slides? You'll see right here, it'll slide really easily. Now we're gonna take that other side and bring it around because this is how you make a double sliding knot. So it's an adjustable necklace. And then we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna go over top of the other side, go around three times, and then we're gonna slide that right through the opening of both the coils. See the double coils right there? Right there, we're gonna slide that right through. This is such an easy uh, little hack on making a necklace that's adjustable. And then we're gonna tighten that. And now you have a sliding necklace. So I'm gonna pull this and this will make it look more like a choker and trim both edges. And I don't do it all the way to the knot. I like it kind of hanging because I like the look of it. Then we're going to add our charm. We're gonna grab a jump ring and you open it side to side. That's always important. Never open it like a claw because you'll never get it back together. Take another pliers and go side to side back into place. You can use your fingers also. Then I added a pearl just because I thought that would make it more interesting and I did that the same way, open side to side the jump ring and then close it side to side. And now you have your first necklace. And again, you'll be able to slide that open to get over your head and it's adjustable. Now for the next one, take a large jump ring, open it side to side. 
and then add it to a chain and then add it to your charm and then close it side to side and then you have your second necklace. So pretty. Look how pretty these turned out. They are just so unique and I think the coolest thing would be that if you have like some old china that maybe like was your grandma's and it was chipped, you can make it into like an heirloom piece. Be a great gift for the holidays and for a birthday present for somebody you love. And I'm all about layering, so wearing the two necklaces together is great. Remember how I made this leather one adjustable? So you just slide it down and see how I made it longer. And look how cute this looks. And then you can also take your other necklace, the one that was on the chain, and I made this longer so it was more like a duster and hung that lower. And then pulled the choker down a little more and made that longer as well. And I just love the way these turned out. They're versatile and I just think they are just beautiful. I found these pretty china teacups at an estate sale along with this old shutter. I began by taking the shutters apart. I only wanted to use the solid one for this project. And those pretty cups, they were going to need to be cut down to fit flush to the shutter. Using a Dremel cutting tool, I scored a U-shape into the cup, then continued to run the tool back and forth until the piece was cut completely through. I also cut a small slit in the front of the cup for drainage. I marked and cut six teacups. Now for those pretty saucers. To be safe, I placed them in a shallow box and broke them into lots of pieces. I covered my work surface with plastic and laid the shutter on top. I began to apply the mastic to the shutter and I gently but firmly pressed my first teacup into the mastic and then I began to add pieces of the pretty saucers. I worked in small sections so the mastic wouldn't dry. Because my shutter had a recessed panel, I added mastic to the groove in the shutter until the entire surface was even. To make sure that the cups would stick, I applied mastic directly to the cut edges and then firmly pressed them into place. It was a lot of fun fitting the broken china onto the shutter. Mosaics are great because you really have design freedom. After about three hours, the mastic was dry and it was time to grout. I used a Mr. Clean Magic Eraser type sponge to apply the grout. And a soft cloth to remove the excess. I made sure each cup had a fair amount of grout inside. After 24 hours, the grout was dry and I flipped the shutter over and attached two D-rings to the back of the shutter. My planter was going to hold live plants and I was going to put it outside so I needed to waterproof it by spraying the front and the back with water seal. I placed a little bit of pea gravel in the bottom of each cup for drainage and then I planted ground cover plants called treadwells. I hope this inspires you to create a planter for your outdoor space this spring.